Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gym TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi all, this is Azang News and here is the latest updated. Singapore City Omicron coronavirus wave through Delta. We're going to adopt the wait and see posture. Just how long are we back? Yesterday alone, we... The country's COVID-19 task force says Singapore expects the Omicron coronavirus variant to cause a bigger wave of infections than Delta and a booster dose will soon be required for adults to be considered fully vaccinated. However, there will be proportionally fewer cases. The city-state of 5.5 million people allows only those counted as fully vaccinated to enter malls or dine-in restaurants or at the hawker stalls. Singapore detected 1,281 Omicron cases, comprising 1,048 people who had come from overseas and 233 local cases. The number made up around 18% of its total infections. Authorities say the COVID-19 situations remained under control and that they will maintain current COVID-19 rules, such as restricting social gatherings to five people through the expected Omicron wave and during the Chinese New Year period, which is in about a month. Thailand people worries after Omicron cases increase in the country. The head of the Thailand volunteer group providing free COVID-19 testing in Bangkok says he fears a possible wave of new coronavirus infections, including of the highly transmissible Omicron variant. The number of Omicron infections in the country had tripled to a total of 2,338 cases compared to 740 in the period from November 1st to December 29 of last year, half of those infections from foreign travelers. The country reported 3,899 new infections overall, a rise from about 2,600 daily cases. Chris Potranandana, head of the Zendai Foundation, says the country needed to be prepared, so nothing will happen like in August or July in 2021 again, where people were dying on the streets. Meanwhile, volunteers disinfected Kundarat Yutakom store, which she reopened for the first time after being closed for seven months. There have been 2.2 million infections and nearly 22,000 coronavirus-related fatalities since the pandemic began. Thailand has vaccinated about 64.1% of an estimated 72 million people living with two doses, but only 9.7% of the population has received booster shots. Australia and Japan sign agreement to strengthen security ties. Australia and Japan signs a treaty to beef up defense and security cooperation at a virtual summit in the latest move to strengthen ties amid China's rising military power and economic clout in the Indo-Pacific region something you and I both understand very well. The two leaders signed a reciprocal access agreement. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison had said it will for the first time set out frameworks for the two countries' defence forces to cooperate with each other. The strengthened security ties expand on efforts by the United States, Japan, India and Australia dubbed the Quad to work and shared concerns about China, including its pressures on Taiwan, trade disputes and freedom of navigation in the region. China responds by saying that bilateral treaties should promote regional trust, peace and stability. Under the current security environment, weather agency warns stock and surrounding areas about heavy snow problems. Tokyo embraces its first snow of the year, brought by a low-pressure system emerging in the area. The Japan Meteorological Agency put the capital city and three surrounding prefectures of Kanagawa, Saitama and Chiba under a heavy snow alert.
about 5 cm or 2 inches of snow had piled up at around 3 pm local time, while temperatures dropped to 0.4 degrees Celsius. More snow is expected to fall until late night. Though the city has not seen major traffic disruptions, the agency warned about icy roads and possible traffic delays and disruption during evening commuting hours. South Korea president calls for dialogue after North Korea's missile launch. South Korea's President Moon Jae-in calls for a dialogue at the groundbreaking ceremony for a rail line near the border with North Korea hours after the North fire a suspected ballistic missile off its east coast. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff says the presumed missile was fired around 10 past 8 a.m. from an inland location over the east coast and into the sea. The first launch since October underscored the leader Kim Jong-un's New Year vow to bolster the military to counter an unstable international situation. Moon visited the South Korean East Coastal city of Goseong, where he called the new rail line a stepping stone for peace and regional balance on the Korean peninsula. Moon acknowledged the launch raised concerns of tension and damage to inter-Korean relations and called for North Korea to make sincere efforts for dialogue. China rejects some U.S. politicians' criticism of Tesla for opening showroom in Xinjiang. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin says turning a blind eye to facts but imposing baseless sanctions on Xinjiang, the United States practice fully disclosed its true intention to impose economic coercion and political containment on China. Wong makes the remarks in response to the reports that some United States politicians criticized Tesla for opening its showroom in Xinjiang, accusing the company of ignoring or supporting human rights abuses in the region and saying they cannot turn a blind eye to what is happening in Xinjiang. Wong pointed out that media and scholars from many countries have published articles stressing that the so-called forced labor and genocide in Xinjiang are entirely fabricated lies based on prejudice and hostility towards China. Its real purpose is not to protect human rights but to suppress and contain China as well as sabotage ethnic unity, stability and development in Xinjiang. However, the United States has turned a blind eye to these voices. Taiwan Armed Forces stage exercise amid tensions with rival China. Taiwan Air Force jets screamed into the sky in a drill simulating a war scenario showing its combat readiness amid heightened military tensions with China, which claims the island as its own. Ground forces also went through drills with armored vehicles and soldiers seen performing exercises through forested and urban areas. The exercises are part of three-day drill to show Taiwan's battle readiness ahead of the Lunar New Year. Tension across the sensitive Taiwan Strait have been rising in the past few years, with Taiwan complaining of repeated missions by Chinese Air Force near the Democratic Island. It has termed Chinese activities as gray zone warfare designed to both wear out Taiwan's forces by making them repeatedly scramble and also to test its responses. And that's all for today. We'll see you soon. Bye.